you are a four by five film photographer. That's not really common anymore. How did you get into that, and how did you stick with it for so long? Um, well, I went to after twenty years of um, like not being in college, I decided to go back and do my masters when I was in London. And um, before I used to shoot this um, cross color work, which was shot on a thirty five millimeter film camera. And so even when digital came out, I just kept shooting with my film camera. Um, so then when I went to college for my master's, I decided that I wanted to do something different. You know, I wanted to change my whole style. Um, and so to be honest with you, it was just kind of like by trial and error. I, um, I knew what I wanted to talk about, which has something to do with uh, race and color. And I just kept shooting, you know, uh, like I had a Hasselblad, just all different formats. Um, different people, different backgrounds, so I didn't really know what I wanted, and finally when I got the shot, which is actually that one there, um, Dean, uh, I knew that's from, like my cornerstone shot, I knew that that would be the camera I was going to be using and the film I was going to be using. It just sort of felt that right. yeah. 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 And so, yeah, I mean, I had, I had had a camera, a 4x5 camera, like all my life uh, through college. I, you know, my dad got me one um, for my 4x5 uh, class. And so I always had it, you know, hanging about, and I was always sort of shooting back in those days uh, with the Polaroid film, which was really fun to use. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah. So we, you were working with the 4x5 when you met Lise, or what medium, and what was sort of the subject matter you were photographing when you and Lise met? Yeah, for sure. By that time, when I met Lise, it would have been um, a couple years that I moved back to America. Um, so yeah, once I started shooting portraits again with my 4x5, I was, I, you know, I'm going to always shoot with that camera. Mm -hmm. you know, all the um, all the guys in the shops, like, you know, Adorama and such, they're like, hey Lola, you hear something called digital? Something <laughs> called digital is really, you know, great. I'm like, oh, what's that? You know, it's like, I'm not convinced that a digital image can be as, um, as well I guess it's, I think that the film, the grain of the film, um, render, renders people's faces better than a digital image. Almost like it's revealing a completely different layer. Well, yeah, I mean, like a, a digital, I mean, boring for those who aren't a photographer, but, uh, you know, digital images are made with um, these square pixels as opposed to film, which is made with circular yeah, grains, crystals. you know? So that's why I think that it, it you know, uh, renders a, a more true image. Co uh, digital is always trying to correct. You know, if it's dark, they, it tries to make it light. Even if you're on manual, I find that it's th it seems to try and help you, even though you don't want to help, you know? Yeah. So, um, and I think also with the use of digital cameras all the time, people are, you know, always doing these selfies all the time. You know, which I'm guilty of, <laughs> I have to say. But um, at the end of the day, my work is about you know pride and power. And so when people are in front of that big camera, it's like they kind of like you know strike a pose that's more, um, I suppose, more like a stronger, prouder image, as opposed to just like a snapshot, yeah, like stoic. In a sense. Yeah. Because I feel like when I when I do look at your images, your your subjects are both like comfortable, but they're present and they're powerful in their images and. Do you think, like, what is the first thing you do when you set up a, a portrait sort of session with your subjects? Like, how do you almost relax them and, and get them into... Well, it depends. I mean, like, for the ladies, for the SALT series, um, I ask them where they like to sit, where they usually sit at their home, you know, when they don't have company. So I, I'm trying to find a familiar spot. Or some places I walk into and I'm just kind of like, that's the background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a very... It's like um, some kind of secretive thing that happens, you know, the the moment be before I shut, um, I press the shutter and I get the image that I'm looking for. Um, I don't know, maybe my teacher skills, I think that that yeah. kind of probably helps with me being able to relate to someone really quickly because, you know, I'm only sort of in there for two, two hours and out, you know, I'm in, set up, shoot, then I'm out. You yeah, know what I mean? and you have to um, capture that person within those two hours. Yeah. So I know that in Lisa's collection, she has some of your portraiture work. Do you remember the first piece that Lisa bought from you? 
I cannot remember. No. I mean, I'm feeling like it was from my Surpassing series because um, it was at Art Off the Mains, which I mentioned to you is uh, was the African American, African and Caribbean art fair that happened uh, for a while. It was at the Puck Building. That's where I met these. Um, and I believe that I was there. No, I know I was there with Enfoco. Enfoco. So yes, I was at Art Remains with Enfoco, and I believe that it was the surpassing work because uh, they were showing that work a lot. Mm -hmm. It was in the magazine and the way it was and um, so I'm thinking that it would, it would have been something from there. And that's how you met. So did you? The first time you met her was also the first time she bought a piece of work from you, or? Yeah, I mean, I think that it didn't happen right away, but I feel like we exchanged numbers and email addresses and such like that. Yeah. And kept in touch. It kept in touch and it finally happened. I can't remember, but I mean, I think, you know, it was like 10, over 10 years ago. So this has been a very long sort of like artist, art collector relationship. Do you think it's sort of differed? from like any other relationship you've had in the art world? I mean, with Lee's, um, you know, I don't even think I even realized when she first bought my piece that she was a collector. Really? You know, she doesn't come off as like, no. I'm a collector and, you know, you need me type of thing. Um, so, you know, so we just kind of started having this friendship mm -hmm. um, that I feel is like an everlasting friendship, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So she's always... Uh, you know, she's as we've gotten to know each other. You know, I, I'll ask her for advice, and and you know, Lee, she doesn't. You know, you know, she, she'll, she, she'll, she'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, if it's light blue, and you say it's medium blue, she's gonna tell you it's light blue. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, um, so she's a really good person to sort of throw ideas at, and you know, we are adults, so we don't have to. I don't have to agree with her, no. but I know I will get a strong, real opinion from her. And then I can either take it or not take it, and there's no, never any kind of like worry that she's going to be mad at me or whatever. You know? Well, she she sort of like almost lets you just be you. She doesn't want you to be anything different. She's not trying to mold you, which I think is so great because her and I have talked about the idea that the art world can be somewhat intimidating. Like going to galleries or museums can be almost daunting. Do you feel that with her, like there's just not even like a hint of that with her because she wants to support you instead of anything else? Yeah, totally. Um, she's, you know, I I don't really have, as the years have gone on, um, well as this year has gone on, 2019, thanks to Pen and Brush, you know, my life has totally changed. I never really had a relationship with the art world. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, I had an anti-relationship with the art world, um, feeling very invisible and um, yeah, unrecognized mm -hmm. and you know, so um, so yeah, so I don't, I have some other people that have collected my work, mm -hmm. um, but it's, um, it's more than collector artist uh, relationship that I have, you know, it's like sort of sister, mother, some type of family member that Which I can always count on. You. Yeah. yeah, she's just, you know, I mean, like, I go over to her house, like, but if I go for lunch or dinner or whatever, I always, like, bring my swimsuit. <laughs> so I know that she doesn't care, so she's like, sure, go for a swim, and then we'll hang out, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, so, it's like, that's what you would do with a family member, you know what I mean? You wouldn't yeah. really sort of, like, I mean, unless it's a really close friend, no, but, but I just always, like, know that, you know, she's, you know, she wants me to be happy, and she's she's so supportive uh, of me, you know. And she stays updated not only, like, your personal life, but, like, in your art world life. It's just sort of knowing that the artist is more than just something you buy, like, an image from or a piece of painting. Like, they're an entire person, they're a human being, which is not always common in the art world, which is very refreshing. Yeah, well, I mean, I think she, she does. She has a very holistic approach about us, and, um... You know, she chooses what she likes, not what the galleries say or she's supposed to buy. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I love her for that because there's so many artists who, I mean, she, you know, she has the capital to, to do that, mm -hmm. but she'd rather invest in artists who she really believes in, you know. Um, 
and I think that's that's a really rare trait for people, yeah. um, you know. So that just actually brings up another question for me. Um, so she chooses her artist because it's not of any like background or anything because she likes the work. It speaks to her, you know, the skutika, the strike of the heart. Do you sort of do that in your practice when you find your subjects or your subject matter? Like, how do you go about um, choosing your subject matter? Um, a lot of my subjects are my friends or my friends, like grandmothers or great grandmothers. Um, or people will just say, all throughout my career, my friends have been really helpful in, like, saying, you know, oh, I saw this background or this wall that was really good for your shoot, or I know someone that will be good for this series, or, you know, people, my friends are always sort of, like, looking out for me. So a lot of them are people I know. And, you know, now with, like, uh, social media, um, you know, like, like Utah, I, I photographed Utah after meeting them, um, I think really quickly, actually, at Stonewall we met, um, and they were on a date, and I didn't think I think I was just with a friend, but we had kind of seen each other online, so we were like, hey, you know how you kind of feel if like you know someone, we've mm -hmm. seen them online, and so I was like, okay, so whenever you come to, to New York, you got to come by, you know, stay here, and I want to photograph you for my series to mine, so, you know, I think that um, if I go away to travel, if I travel a lot, I'll often put something on like my Facebook page or my, my Instagram and, you know, say, says, you know, this is what I'm looking for, I'm coming to your city, this is what I'm looking for, can you, you know, if you'd like to model for me, please DM me or something like that. Um, so, um, it's like continually building your network and then almost growing like your own community, which I love. Well, I really hope that you continue and share all of our, your stuff with the world. Thank you so much for having us.